Hey, everyone, if you love combat sports and uh, anything else that has to do with combat sports, such as pop culture and martial arts or any other sports too, make sure to hit the like, share, subscribe button to the Drew Spirian show, the show that's 80% combat sports, 20% everything else. My guest today, wow, this is a big honor. Uh, he is, this. keep an eye out for him because he's fighting in the local promotions, but keep an eye out. when I, I'm getting some uh, pretty good uh, up and coming prospects coming up. He, he, I'm going to have to do this like Bruce Buffer, weighing <laughs> at 145 pounds, representing Costa Rica. He has fought in CFFC, Combate Americas, and Pancreas in Japan. He is Andre Barquero Morea. Did I say your last name right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty accurate, man. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here in the Drew Spirings. And uh, thanks for the... Uh, I think you you got uh, yourself a career as a as an, an announcer, MMA announcer. Are you serious? <laughs> oh man, I, I think yeah, I gotta... that was a good that was a good introduction. Thank you, man. You know, when I do this, and this is about my guests, I want my guests to feel valued. I want them to know that when they take time out of their day to feel important, I want them to feel valued and important. That is my goal. And if I can do that, and they and they after this conversation, they felt that, that's a success to me. That's amazing. That's that's a great mindset. That's that's gonna be shown in the podcast. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that that's gonna, gonna be shown. Well, thank you, thank you. I'm really excited to have you. I'm uh, and thank you to our uh, our mutual friend we have in uh, Nima. And uh, man, I got to do an ad read. Yeah, if you're an up and coming fighter, especially in my Kyokushin scene, it's like <laughs> if yeah, if there's any Kyokushin fighters that want to go pro and mixed martial arts or kickboxing. Let me know, uh, message me on uh, message me on Instagram and uh, I can see what I can do because moments management is quality. <laughs> Nima and his team will make sure you're yes. taken care of. Like I have an example here in Andre Baquero who was represented by him and such an honor to have you. So yeah, I had to do an ad read there. You see, that's how we do it. That's how you do, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy moments management. It's crazy because uh, I'm always, before I, I even start working with them, I started speaking with Nima. Uh, mm -hmm. Because Daniel, Daniel advised me to to speak with Nima because mm -hmm. he's a house house black belt, right? Mm -hmm. And as soon as we started talking, it was like a click, you know. In some relationships, doesn't matter if it's work, friendship, love, whatever. When when you feel that click and mutual respect and mutual like, um, I would say uh, appreciation for the other, uh, for the other time, for the other's effort. Uh, I would say grateful more, right? Uh, it's just. I feel very, um, I don't know how to say in English because it's not my, fir my first language, but it's uh, like uh, in Spanish, it will be like a padrinal, like, mm -hmm. you know, somebody got my back, somebody okay. got my back. So, mm -hmm. so it's pretty, it's pretty good uh, feeling to be with them. So I know you, you know him personally. I know this is, this is um, a mutual friend of us, but, uh, but he's, he's a great person and, and management wise the best professionally the mm -hmm. best mm -hmm. i agree i agree totally 100 percent. i will back that man until i die he has been he is the last time we spoke takes time out of his day like he, he, he makes you feel like you've known him forever he has your back and when he sees you have potential and you're serious he's going to do everything he can to help you and that's what i like and that's where it brought us together to, so we can help each other build each other's platforms and that's the plan here so you know I could make this about Nima because, you know, he's amazing, but the show's <laughs> about you tonight. So, so Andre, I want to add, I always begin my show off by asking the person, how did you discover martial arts? Well, I was, I was always a huge fan of uh, pro wrestling, like yep. WWE. Um, mm -hmm. As a kid, I, I used to sneak. I remember I used to sneak to watch it because my mom think it was uh, too violent. Mm -hmm. My uncle used to watch it a lot when it was the, the rock and Steve Austin days, mm -hmm. right? When I was like watching him by myself, it was more John Cena, uh, I don't know, uh, Edge and all these guys, Randy Orton, right? And yeah. then one day my mom told me it wasn't real and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe mm. it was stage. <laughs> I was just a huge fan, so I love it. I was passionate about it. And then, and then one day I just went to one of my buddies in high school after that, a couple of days after, and we started playing video games. And it was the UFC 200. 2009 it was Brock Lesnar I remember mm -hmm. on the on the cover mm -hmm. and I started playing that and it was very similar to pro wrestling in a kind of way for me like yeah. I felt that click 
And then I was just playing with GSP, I remember, and I did a Kimura to my friend. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit, what's that? And then that was a Friday and Monday I was training. I was, I was, I was signing in to train. And since that day, I never, I never stopped. Mm -hmm. I fall in love with, with martial arts. And uh, I'm very grateful that I found that in my life. That's amazing. That's, 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 that's amazing. And it's always one of those weird things, whether it's like it's a movie or it could be a video game or it could be just uh, you saw one of your friends do it or yeah. then they say, well, I was bullied and my parents put me in it. Yeah. But it's, but it's usually the ones like the stories I love hearing are the ones where it's like, it was from a video game. Cause like, uh, and I watched, <laughs> I watched UFC or so forth. I remember also before prior to start training, I was watching, um, one day was my birthday. I remember it was, mm -hmm. I was the seven I'm, I'm, and he was Anderson Silva against Chelsea and one. Mm. And I remember Chelsea and was beating Anderson, beating, mm -hmm. beating, beating Anderson. And also at the end, he, uh, he got that triangle and then mm -hmm. he started training like a month after that. He was, that was, I started training September, 2010. I was mm -hmm. in ninth grade. Mm. So, so it was, it was, I remember uh, Anderson Silva was a huge influence that fight. This is the first uh, UFC fight that I watched live, like literally live. And, uh, and yeah, I just started training for curiosity to learn the movements. I never thought I, I will ever compete or something. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I just started like just getting deep to it, deeper and deeper. I wanted to train more. I wanted to learn more. I just wanted to, uh, and then I just wanted to test myself. I wanted to compete to see what was that. And then it just, it just got uh, addicted. Mm -hmm. It and happens to evolve and so, and mostly to win also, like to chase that uh, that uh, the rush that that fighting gives you, right? Mm -hmm. Now here's the funny thing. So when before when we even recorded, you were because you were asking about my martial arts background because uh, Nima set was telling you like told you yeah Drew's actually in martial arts, so he knows a thing or two about training. He does full contact karate and and like he kind of got the name right so he knows i have a kyo now it's like he, everyone pretty much knows i have a kyokushin karate background now yeah. before we really we were when we were breaking the ice and you, you actually knew about kyokushin so i, uh, I know yeah yeah oh. Uh oh what happened uh oh Oops. Lost Andre there, but it's okay. He's coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> and I'm sorry. We lost you there. It's okay. We lost you. I was like, uh oh, like I had to get, I was trying to send the link again to get you on. It's okay. This is going to make for the episode better because, like, it's, uh, there's no perfection in this. But yeah, so just to restart before we, I lost you there. So you did say that you once watched a Kyokushin tournament when you were 14 years old. Did that help influence your also your decision to like stay with martial arts? Well, it it's, as I told you, Costa Rica has a beer, very, very big uh, martial arts background. I will say it's not, it's not very known in the martial art world, but uh, karate, Kyokushin karate was in the nineties was the martial art that was uh, dominating the, the scene, let's say so, right? It was mm -hmm. always boxing over there, but it was more karate. So uh, I remember, yeah, when I was 14, 15, I went to this event. It was the first live fight uh, I watched. It was like a event that he had jujitsu, kickboxing, Muay Thai. And the first fight was a kid, the, the same age as me. They did Kyokushin and they started hitting each other on the chest. They just go at it to see which body will handle more in the pocket, just hitting leg kicks mm -hmm. and everything. When the fight ended, what it helped me it was knowing what I didn't want to fight. <laughs> I didn't want to fight karate. I was that was crazy. I I just felt it was way too crazy for that time for me. I saw the kid with with his um, chest all black, like bruised. The two kids they're limping, and I was like, that's too rough. But uh, I respect karate a lot. I was I was talking the other day with the old school karate guys from Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. I, I run into them. And I was telling them it's it's 
it's it's a great as it's a great sport. It's a great it's a great martial arts. I love it because GSP is my it's one of my favorite fighters. Not my favorite fighter of all time. He he comes from that background. So it's mm-hmm. it's a great it's a great um, martial art. It's a very hardened on the body and the spirit. It's Japanese traditionally. I just I just love everything about uh, about karate. Mm-hmm. Interesting. No, that's amazing, and I appreciate the the admiration you have. I always say to to uh, when I I have like uh, I have family members that they want to put their um, like their their kids into martial arts. So they're like my cousins who now have their kids, and I say put them in karate, and they are like why karate? I said because they're gonna learn how to punch and kick. It might not be perfect. Yeah. It's not like the flow of boxing or say kickboxing, but they're gonna learn how to use their hands and fists if they have to a defend themselves, but b also they're yeah. gonna learn traditions of to keep pushing their potential yeah yeah 100 percent. any martial arts i, I just think mm-hmm. any martial arts for kids it just it just teaches them disciplines it teaches mm-hmm. them patience because sometimes kids want belts once we they want to win fights and, and it teaches you if there is somebody always better than you there's somebody the same as you there's somebody lower than you it's it's i just i just feel that it's uh it's a philosophy that helps kids and it also empowers them. You know, it, it just brings a lot of uh, a lot of benefits. My my one of my jiu-jitsu coach, they say that kids should should know how to defend themselves and know how to swim. Those are two things you gotta put your kids on mm-hmm. swimming classes and uh, and uh, defend defense, personal defense, whatever it is, karate, taekwondo, uh, jiu-jitsu. The, he says judo, whatever, I they will it will bring something positive to them, right? <laughs> very very true because at the end of the day some children are just not meant for team sports no matter how much you try to push them in (laughs) like my parents tried to put me in soccer i hated it they tried to put me in ice hockey i hated it because i had a very because the problem with team sports too is you could have a really negative coach who's gonna just bully the kid and you know and it, it and it ruins the fun yeah well, for me, for me, I started doing MMA also because I, I used to play soccer a lot. And for okay. me, team sports, it was also something about team effort. You know, when you mm-hmm. see, when you're running the ball, the whole game, you're running, you're killing yourself. You're trying to, you're trying to make the goals. You're trying to get that ball back. You're trying to pass the ball. And you see the other guy maybe not running. That said that for me, it was like also that, like, I'm, I'm going to stop doing this because I, I can't stand this guy not running and I'm running. Nah, I'm going to the individual sport where it only depends on me. It only depends on my output on and on my uh on me. hundred percent on me. It doesn't depend in anybody else. So mm-hmm. that's also another stuff why I stopped playing uh team sports. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And did you notice that uh, it uh like so once you come so you know you're in you're in grade nine and you're in martial arts because of, you know, first, you know, WWE, and then, you know, you also watch a Kyokushin tournament, a karate Kyokushin yeah. tournament. And did you have any other favorite fighters, like other than, because everyone's like, I love GSP. Were there any other fighters that also, yeah, that you also like idolized as a kid or looked up to? Yeah, for me also, another imp- impressive thing as a kid that, that it stuck with, stood with me a lot, it was Frankie Edgar when mm-hmm. he fought Gray Maynard. Mm-hmm. When he fought Benson, when he fought, I, I just, I was really impressed with Frankie's heart, Frankie's pace. Uh, so I'm always been a fan, a fan of Frankie. I'm, I'm, I'm a little sad how's, how's his career is going down now, right? But it's, it's also the process. He's now a veteran, right? He's, he's mm-hmm. still fighting the top ten for I don't know how many years in three different weight classes. I, I just feel he's, he's a UFC Hall of Famer, right? He's, he's one of the best. So I, I really loved uh, Frankie. I like uh, I like McGregor what he do to sports. I, I'm also not a fan of him right now, but maybe hopefully he comes back after his injury, right? Um, yeah, we're sharing the same injury. I break my I broke my leg eight mm. months ago. He broke his leg ten months ago. So so we're on the same on the same recovery path. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what he what he uh, takes from this situation. I I really I, I for me I agree with the Connor part. The Connor McGregor from. When he first debuted versus uh, uh, in 2013, um, and then up to UFC 205, 
was my yeah. favorite Connor. The yeah. post Eddie Alvarez fight is the Connor that I dislike. Yeah, you see how um how I don't know, I don't know what happened. I just I just think it's hard to know because uh, he's so on top, right? He's so on top. He's he's it's hard to know what he does, what he doesn't do, but uh, it's obvious in his last two or three fights, he's not training with the same guys he used to train for those fights. Uh, you know, it was the big S- SBG team all together, training, grinding. You need that uh, iron shepherd's iron. I feel like he's in charge of what he does. I think he says, oh, I want to do weights today. I want to do pads. I want to do this. You can't be in charge on your camp. You need that kind of uh, uncomfortable. And he always he always was uh, talking that walk when he was uh, fighting, right? He was always talking about how he loves to be comfortable and be uncomfortable and all that stuff. I think he needs to um, go back to his old mind, to his old saying, to his old mindset mm-hmm. of hunger. And hopefully, I, I'm I'm pretty excited because he has the 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 money he has the money he has to do it you know he has the money to do it right he has the money to do it at the highest level he has the money to even improve himself like lebron james lebron james put a, a one million dollar on himself every every year you know so mm-hmm. that's what high level athletes do that's what goats do so hopefully i don't know injuries can change you right he he can be that he can bring that fire back i feel that fire i always have that fire but he just make it a little bit bigger it was like you put alcohol and a, and a match together. That's how I feel mm-hmm. after my injury. So, yeah, I just hopefully, hopefully it goes back because I'm I'm a huge fan of of old Connor, two hundred five yeah. Connor back back, make make Connor two of UFC two hundred five again. <laughs> oh, exactly. I definitely, I definitely agree. Like, and and it's and uh, there's also. It's it's just crazy how like he elevated the art. It's just crazy how he basically elevated the the sport the sport it's undeniable fighters start getting more money after him it's undeniable like now you will see a one million ports uh uh in the ufc more frequently before it wasn't even it was it was impossible before to see it before corner was i think it was only one guy and, and dana never told who was that guy they pay one million so mm-hmm. i think he bring the, the rates he big the ice also, he bring a lot of eyes to the sport, and uh, and yeah, hopefully he can make it bad because there there's there's some hungry bad new starts coming into the sport. So if you if you it's gonna be it's gonna get rougher. Yeah, it's yeah. So new, it's gonna get it's gonna get harder for everybody. So you gotta be on the it's it's fighting. You gotta be on the right mindset. You can go you can go into a cage thinking that nothing can happen. To you. Well, I don't know if you saw the news, but on MMA fighting, did you hear about Kamzat pre- presenting a hand saying, Connor, if you want to learn wrestling, come to All Stars? Could you imagine yeah. if well, Connor he, decides to go there? That's that's a good camp. You know, that's where where the other part of moments is Magic. Magic, our, our, the other part of moments. Magic, great guy. Also, the same the same vibe. Magic is he's he's an All Star with uh, with Hamzat and and all those guys and. Uh, he he's been telling me you gotta come here. We we got killers out of your way. We got Russians. We got we got guys from Georgia. We got guys from all the all all over Europe. So yeah. it's a great it's a great gym. Hopefully hopefully he makes that transition. I don't know. I don't think he will make it because he's too loyal to his team. But hopefully he go back to the roots and really going to the gym to the SPG and just stay there two months. Yeah, I would go to All Stars if I was him. I just want to learn how to grapple properly, do the proper takedown defense with uh, Hamzat because I think Hamzat is also on the level of being one of those huge stars if he he is now yeah he has that factor right he he has that factor the UFC likes him he's fighting Gilbert in a he has that aura over him you gotta create that aura that's what Connor had that aura he mm-hmm. was invincible he was the best mm-hmm. and Hamza has now that aura so I mean it's that's an interesting fight with Gilbert, but it's also it's also high stakes for uh, Hamza. Also. It, it is, because if Hamza wins, fast track to a title. But if he loses, it's kind of still a win-win for him because he's going to move up the ranking since the ranking yeah. system is very weird. But that, I just don't, I, I just see that Hamza is like that, is that train that's coming at full speed and no, he's going to be such a puzzle to solve. It's just, I think I think I don't know I don't know if I would love love to see him with Usman. 
Usman mm-hmm. looks very impressive lately. So, so I don't know because that I mean that the that Gilbert Burns fight will will hopefully hopefully will give us a, a lot of answers because if it's again like a like the other fight with the eighty five, uh, mm-hmm. Mer, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, it was Der- yeah. Gerald Mearshart, and then he fought the late Li Jing Liang. Yeah, but those fights didn't tell us anything. Only that he's a beast. So if if, it, if it's the same with Gilbert, I mean, it's our it's our. I would like to see him a little bit tested just to see uh to see if he mm-hmm. can handle Usman because I, I think Usman just looked impressive every fight. Well, Usman is the pound for pound number one right now, and if he keeps winning, there could be an argument made that he could be the best of the welterweight goals. of yeah. all time. Yeah, he's up. He's up there. He he has the streak. He has the titles. He has the title defenses. If he had a couple more, as he said, so so he's arguably there. It's mm-hmm. Arguably there. Mm-hmm. So Andre, the other thing too is, um, you know, you've been fighting in the local, uh, not local, yeah, the the local promotions. Well, but you've also traveled quite a bit too. You know, you've you've, yeah. you fought in you first fought in uh, you fought in such as the promotions such as CFFC, Combat the Americas, Calvo, and Pancreas. So, what was the? Can you tell me what was the experience of the first pro fight you had? Uh, well, my first pro fight was well. I, I was coming from an amateur mm-hmm. amateur career, nine fights. I did nine fights amateur. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was nine and zero, and then and then I did my debut here in Costa Rica. It was it was a weird fight. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't. Uh, I lost the decision right against this guy, but it was it was it was it was just nonsense mm-hmm. uh, loss. I, I I took him down twelve times in that mm-hmm. fight. Whoa! I dominated thirteen minutes of that fight. I was on top thirteen minutes of that fight, or twelve minutes, eleven minutes. I don't know how many minutes of that fight. And it was just the end, the last minute and a half. He was pouring on me. I was just moving like I was. I was tired. Twelve takedowns. Come on, twelve takedowns. It's a lot of takedowns, right? And um, and yeah, I, I, even when I when I finished second round, my my corner told me we're good. I know you're tired. Just move. Just move. Just play with him. Move. You already won. And then when the decision came, it was a split decision. It was it was kind of fishy. It was Costa Rica, you know. It's mm-hmm. sometimes local events are are super fishy. Uh, it was the the refereeing staff. It, they were the their coaches, so it was kind of weird. It was kind of fishy, but still, I was really mad at that time. It was it was a weird decision. I came from a nine and zero amateur career. I get my debut, and then I lost. It was it was it was it was hard for me. It was a hard mm-hmm. to swallow, but it also taught me a lot for my career. And you can see it on my record after that. Uh, that is, I was coming for a very like. Uh, comfortable winning mm-hmm. decisions just winning decisions mm-hmm. just doing that lay taking guys down controlling him beating him up a little bit mm-hmm. not even taking that 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 much risk and then after that i was said like fuck it I'm, I'm just gonna start finishing these guys i'm gonna start using my jiu-jitsu the things that i'm doing if i can if i if i took a guy down 13 minutes and i couldn't submit it that's bad that's on me also mm-hmm. so that's that's the mindset that i took after that and it's, it's helped me since since that I'm always chasing for the neck. I'm always trying to, I'm always trying to get that neck. Like it's the jungle, you know. They the animals always go to the neck. I'm always trying to, to get that neck. Oh yeah, I love the expert. I use that expression too. Like, but not just for fighting. Like sometimes, like when I want to get back at someone, I like to say, "Go for the jugular." Like the animals yeah. in the jungle, as you say. So yeah, I like to say what I say is, "Go for the jugular," because that's like the vital. Yeah. And you know, you did amass a five and one record after your your first. Uh, pro fight but you said they were decisions and you know you felt okay it's uh, you're just getting by so when you had this shift okay so when you started having the shift um and this was when you fought in uh, combat days americas in uh 2019 in november as if i'm not mistaken that's what i saw that's what i oh keep losing andre here oh boy he's coming back he's coming back don't worry people he's coming back just he's using zoom from his phone so don't worry, he's coming back. And he's back. It's okay. Technology is not perfect. Do not worry. This happens. I feel like I'm Ariel Helwani right now. You know when Helwani loses like a guest <laughs> yeah, for two minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I got that. I got that on. I think, I think, I think uh I'm giving you experience in this. Losing, losing it. So you know. 
when when it happens again, you will have a couple a couple experience with me. <laughs> it's a feather in the cap. You got to you, know, you and listen. I'm not on ESPN, so that's the thing. I'm not. I'm not a big name person. I do this because I love it. So don't. We're worry. getting there. We're getting there, Drew. We're getting there soon. I'm bigger. I'm gonna be bigger. You know, as as uh, yeah. Joey Bur- as a shout out to to Joey Birkenbosch and Burt Cops of Cops Jim and Holland. They said, "Hey, we see something big in you." So I'm gonna. So I have that confidence that I know I'm gonna be big because you got. I think the key in uh, you know just to go off on a small tangent here. I think the key in doing this is is as I said, you make the person feel valued or the people feel valued. And then it's the, and then you take the bumps in the road, like, you know, where we lose you for a minute or two from the connection. And then it's just, you can't be too serious because if you're too serious too, it never goes well. So you just got to take it for what it is. That's a hundred percent the right mindset. Yeah. That's that's, you said it right. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's a work in progress. Sometimes, sometimes like, you know, look, I'm human. I have my mistakes too, where I get, where I let stuff kind of get to me. I'm better now. Cause as you get older, you kind of realize like, yeah. you just don't have much time to really care about that stuff, but yeah, no, but, um, so in November of 2019, taking it back. <laughs> so November <laughs> of 2019, you fight in combat days Americas and that's, yeah. you get a nice submission. When, what was that yeah. feeling like to when you said, okay, I go from getting decisions to now, wow, I'm using my jujitsu and I may, and I can, I can stand with these guys. Well, it was, it was more of, um, that same fear that I told you that, that got me to start finishing Mm -hmm. guys, because I was coming from a loss. Uh, I I fought for the CFFC title that the last fight before that. And I got called for this fight in 10, 10, nine, eight days notice. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a, it was a catch with a, a 140, so I, I was moving up to 35, and I also was doing a, a catch with a, a 140, mm-hmm. and uh, it was it was a close fight. I, I I do think I dominate the first round easily. The second round it was it was kind of a, a close fight, but I knew I wasn't the homeboy. You know, it's mm-hmm. Combat Americas is a Mexican Latin American like American based, but it's more Mexican oriented. So I know if it, if it was going to be a close decision, they would give him the decision. So I know coming to the third round, my coaches told me, like, maybe we need to finish. So I was just feeling that that same sense of uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose uh, my my other purse because it's, it's the bonus if I win. And uh, I don't want to let this into another judges because I know how upset I will be because I remember that feeling that I had the last time that I let that I that I think that I got it. And uh and knowing that experience, as I told you, like I was really mad for my MMA debut, pro debut, but then it was a learning experience. That's the martial art way. As, as you told now, when, when, when something doesn't go the way, sometimes it gets into our, into our head, but it's, it's just always trying to look to improve. It's always trying to look how to, to, to improve, to get better. And that, that's my approach in that fight. I was just like, I can let this sleep again with me. And I'm, I'm glad I did it because I haven't fought since. So. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that would have killed me having that, that, uh, that loss, uh, feeling on me for, for these almost three years uh, that would kill me. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm glad, I'm glad I push it a little bit more. So it's always pushing for the finish only. If you push mm-hmm. a little bit, the finish will come, especially mm-hmm. with jujitsu. Very true. Very true. So then you also fought in pancreas. So you, you've been traveling around. So you go from Costa yeah. Rica to North America, then Combates Americas, yes, it could be in Mexico, but the thing is, they mainly have events in like San Antonio, Texas. So yeah, still I, fought, kind of- I fought in San Antonio. Yeah, they're they're yeah. more they're more in the states, as I told you, but it's it's Univision. Univision is the owners, right, mm-hmm. or the or the platform that that streams the fights. So it's it's a Latin American, uh, it's a it's a Mexican company. I mean, it's American based, but the owners. They're lat they're Latin, they're Hispanic speakers, they're Hispanic yeah. people. Yeah. So so the more investment they're doing, because they're saying they they used to have like three hundred thousand views every far every Friday they were being PFL, but it's a different out audience. It's the American Hispanic people that live in the state that watch mm-hmm. Combat Americas because they watch Univision, they watch novellas. And Friday night, prime time, instead of novellas, you get fights. And it's Mexican style fights. Those guys just they stand in there. They 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 throw. Now they're bringing. They they change their name to Combat Combat Global, and now they start bringing uh, a lot of uh, European fighters. So it, it's getting more globally. But they 
even the owner also always was telling me our our fan base is not the the same fan base that the UFC has. So mm. it's 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 more Latin American. Like they're just they're aiming for that for that uh, market, the Latin American market. Yeah. So what they want to do is they want to they want to get the Latin American market to get into yeah. mixed martial arts, and then hopefully by putting more Latin American eyes. And that demographic yeah. on the sport, it's going to bring eyes and viewership. And then more people are going to just, and then hopefully the, the planet, they don't only not watch combat these Americas, but then they watch UFC, but the main yeah. goal is to keep that market of uh, the Hispanic Americans yeah. watching uh, combat days. Yeah. It's exactly what they want to do. They want, they want more. Cause he's always putting on Twitter. His name is Campbell McLaren. He used to be one of the yes. UFC players. Yeah, yeah. So he's always, He's always he's always talking about ratings and uh, all this stuff like and uh, he's always talking. That's what. Why did we beat? Why did we beat PFL in ratings? Because we don't have the same fan base. He's always pointing on that. So it's very it's very nice project. Uh, what Combate? It's a great company. I I I felt well when I fought with them and uh, yeah, it's a great show. It's a, it's a high quality show. Mm -hmm. it's, it's high level fighting good mexican boxers like they, they know how to they know how to box <laughs> yeah they really do know how to box oh yeah mexico it's a uh, boxing uh boxing uh haven uh, it's one of the havens of boxing and it's hmm? yeah sorry no it's it's yeah mexico they're they're known for their boxing julio cesar chavez Juan manuel marquez canelo um I don't know the El Travieso. There, 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 there's, there's a lot. Mungia now Benavides. There's a lot of really, really good boxers. They, and they, they don't break. They don't break. No. They just go forward. They don't break. I love it. It's uh, yeah for the the Mexican boxers. They just have that cardio and that will. They just, they, they just, they just keep. They're like Terminator. You ever watch Terminator Two Judgment Day? It's like Arnold and the one that turns into like water or liquid. That's what just they're keep like. Coming. You just keep coming and keeps coming stronger. Mm -hmm. You hit mm -hmm. it, the heart is going to hit you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very, very true. So then you also go to Pancreas in Japan. How did that happen? What was, and what was that experience like? Well, 2015, I, I went to Japan for, for, I, I went, the only UFC event that I watched live, it was in, in Japan. It was uh, Roy Nelson against Josh Barnett. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went there because I was uh, I was sponsored by this brand, uh, po Polish brand, Manto. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they they set up something with this school, uh, Kid Yamamoto School, because they were sponsors kids too. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kid Yamamoto School is called Crazy B, and they they hook us up. So we went there, we stayed there. I trained there for like a month or so, and they was the a couple months after of that was my my pro debut. That it was that fight in Costa Rica. That it was like. That I told you the story before, and then 2018 I came back, and then Kid Kid Yamamoto got me a fight in Pancras. He told me you want to fight. I told him yeah, and uh, yeah, I stayed there for for three almost three months, a little bit less, a little bit more, because I I went out to Yangon also, and uh, it was it was amazing experience fighting in Japan. It's a different crowd. It's a very respectful uh, opponents. It's a very respectful crowd. It's a very respectful. Uh, commission let's say so everybody's very japan is very it's just another world so um it was uh fighting in the in the lands of the samurai being the first costa rican that fought mma there and won it's just very it's 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 nice it's nice it's nice it's it's, it's it, it was a good experience I, I got a triangle in the first round um that guy fell asleep and then the referee told I knew the guy wasn't maybe asleep, so I keep it a hold in. The, the referee told me, like, hold in. Then the guy woke up. He was like, no, I didn't sleep. But, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was a fun experience. I would love to fight there. They want me to fight there again, but I was like, no, I'm going back to Costa Rica. I've been here for three months. I need to go back home. Man, so, yeah. so it, was, it, was, it was a great experience. It was, it, was, it was an amazing experience. Just knowing mm -hmm. Kid Yamamoto, a legend. I trained with Musashi, K1 legend, also and his brother. Um, Kyoji Horoguchi also. Oh. It, was, it was just an amazing experience training in Japan. And what's even more impressive is that on that card that you were there was uh, current Bellator, now Mel Bellator middleweight champion, Gegard Musashi. Like, he lost by, look, got caught. You know, like, like I'm a fan. I'm a very big supporter. 
they all know I'm 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 the biggest supporter of Gegard, but yeah, the Gegard was beating Uriah Hall. But like when you watched that, like when you watched Gegard, I was watching that fight live. Yeah, man. he was beating the crap out of Uriah Hall, and then he got he he just got he just wanted to get that takedown and 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 whole time that that leg perfectly, but yeah. but then he got him back. I yeah. mean that he got to show he got him back, and uh, I was also I was speaking with Nim with Nims before this fight because. After his last fight, people start saying this, but Nims was saying this, and and I was agreeing with him before this. His last fight is he's the most underrated fighter in in MMA history. He's just I don't know how long he's been on top. He's he's not bad at anything. He's good everywhere. He's good at striking. He's good at kicking. He's good at clinch. He's good at grinding pound. He's good at getting himself up. He's fought the best of the best in the mm-hmm. UFC. In dream in. I don't know for how long, man. I just, I'm impressed by Gegard, and he's just getting, he just keeps getting better. I'm, I'm sad. I, I never get to see him get that UFC crack like on the belt, on the belt. But, uh, but, um, you know, that's politics. Sometimes in MMA, right? They, they go to other big organization, get that belt, and uh, he's proven now that he's probably and arguably one of the best, if not the best middle in the world right now. If there's a middleweight, if there's a Mount Rushmore for middleweight, he's up there. The argument, you cannot dispute it. Like 100%, some people, man. And some people say, like, I have this argument all the time. So, Nima, when you watch this, Gegard, Bert, Joey, when you guys see this, those are all gig. That's the team, Musasi. I just want you to know that I'm in the front lines making sure that Gegard gets the respect he deserves because I argue with people every day. Izzy's better. No. no Izzy might be good right now in UFC, but if we're talking about MMA as a whole, UFC aside, we need to talk about mixed martial arts in general. He's a top three of all time in the middleweight category. You cannot yeah. deny that. Top three, easy. Maybe top two. He could be top two by the end of it. Yeah, I don't, mean Anderson there. Yeah. Anderson's number one, obviously, because of what yeah. he did. And then you can make an argument for, for Gegard and then Izzy, because Izzy's defended his belt. He's done it consistently. Although I'm really, look, I like Izzy, but I'm, I prefer Musasi. So yeah, that's... yeah, me too, me too. Of course, I'm a I'm, I'm a huge Musashi fan. Like I, I'm a I'm a I'm a MMA all around me fan. Too. So I, I know Musashi for a long time. I know it before he got into the UFC. So so I'm I'm, I'm I know his skill set. I've yeah. seen who he fought. I I've seen his skill skill set get tested because yeah. that's when you know how good a guy is. Mm-hmm. Oh, he defend that takedown again. A, a good wrestler. He, he stood up against a good jiu-jitsu guy. He knocked out a good boxer. Or he, you know, he's moving and just touching the boxer how he, how he wants. He's out striking the, the, the striker. You know, that's the things that when you see him, you know, that guy's good. No, because yeah. he's just beating bombs or mm-hmm. whatever. Not bombs, but not guys that probably at his level. He's not probably get tested like that. So, so mm-hmm. yeah, I feel, I feel this is really good. Although he, I think this is very big for middleweight. I think he's very big. He's very, and I don't think nobody can beat him soon. Maybe I don't think in the UFC, maybe Robert, but he has to believe a little bit more. Yeah, Robert, or maybe Pereira because Pereira is rising up the ranks. But the thing with Pereira is he got into MMA at 34 and he's fought uh, unranked guys. I want to see Alex Pereira. The glory middleweight champion of kickboxing. He's probably gonna get yeah. He's probably gonna get some somebody ranked yeah. next time. Yeah. He's probably gonna get somebody that get that gets that trouble of the takedown. I guess because that's how the UFC builds up these guys, right? They, they oh, now we're gonna see if somebody can take you down. If you can be a champion, because if you want, if they did that too easy, right? He fought Bronson. He could stood up. He defended the takedown. They always test these guys in that way. Hopefully, we get to see that matchup. I know that fight will be massive if it gets to to get done so yeah like uh, alex pereira he trains with with my, with my buddy uh plino cruz in, get in out. newark jersey yeah he's my buddy he's one of daniel's black though so i, I know plino wow. and, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's 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 amazing guy i love plino Dude, Big guy. Got, he's huge like when i saw him at when i saw pereira like in the medicine square garden card walk it's like six foot four brazilian i was like this guy looks like a super hero it's he's jack with a capital J. I've seen I've seen tweets of Pe- Pereira's last fight that they're talking like, is there something more intimidating than Pereira's uh, corner? <laughs> he's big, man. He's a big guy. He's a big guy. He hits hard. Very, yeah. very agile for, for his size. 
the only thing that I want to see with more of the Brazilian fighters, and this is like, it's just because if they really want to cater to the masses on the global scale, you have to learn English. Like I, like, I understand Pajera, they, a lot of them use an interpreter because, you know, they, they didn't really learn English in Brazil because there's a multitude of circumstances. But yeah. when you're a pro fighter, the UFC needs to do a better job too to help market their international stars. They're going to say, hey, we're paying for your English cool lessons. Have been bigger. I'm going to show Cook had been bigger if he knew English. Yeah. Come on. How you live How you live in California for I don't know how many years and you don't know how to speak English. Come on. It's kind of lazy, a little bit. It's kind of lazy. It, it, it is kind of true. Like, you have to make the effort. Like, how do you order food? Like, it's like look, I, I live in Quebec, okay? So Quebec is a French yeah. province of Canada. I know, yeah. yeah. And... I speak English, but I have to speak French because it's, and I make the effort. It's not perfect, but you get better along the way. So if I'm an international fighter from another country yeah. and if I want my brand, because I think with fighting too, like you have to remember you're, it, you, you are your business. You're your brand. You have to speak the language of, of the country you're in. Like, so if I'm in America, if I'm in Sweden, I'm going to learn Swedish. It won't be perfect. But and even you just say a little words that, that brings attention, that brings them, oh, this guy knows at least a saying or something. But yeah, I feel I feel there are a couple of new Brazilian fighters that they already know how to speak English, like Luque mm -hmm. and Burns and uh, all these guys, they make the effort. They live in the States also, right? But uh, but I feel that will change. And that, that also is changing in the world now. Everywhere in the world, you need to know in English. So That would change with next next generations. I would love Charles Dubronx to speak a little bit of English, but but Dubronx can do whatever he wants. That's my that's that's my favorite fighter right now, and that's the mm -hmm. style that I wanna that I wanna use. Charles Dubronx style. Mm -hmm. He is a real killer, man. He is. I don't know. I, I don't know. He beats Khabib. I think he beats Mahashev. I don't know. I don't know. I just think he's too. He gets posed, he gets his, he gets cracked, he gets posed, he gets opening, but once he, once he gets you, man, once you get, he gets a hold on you, there's, he is a real, real legit black belt. So mm -hmm. third degree black belt from the favela, mm, you're not getting out of that. <laughs> no, no, I definitely, definitely agree. So now let's take it back to pancreas. because you know, you fought in Japan because you yeah. know, you had that experience. Kid Yamamoto, wow! You met the late Kid Yamamoto, man. Like that, that story though. Like when he passed away, that was such a loss. That was such a loss for martial arts. Man, he was really sad. Um, he was he was really sad because I was with him while while he was sick. The second time, um, I I saw the evolution mm -hmm. of the of, of of what what this illness took away from him, and uh, it was really rough because he was mm -hmm. always. He was always really, really nice with me. When, when, when he met me in 2015 as a kid, he told me one day we went to eat and I, I wanted to pay. And he told me, no, no, you will pay when you were, you will invite me to, to dinner when you are in the UFC. So that stood with me in 2015. And uh, he's always been very, very welcoming with me. He's always uh, rolling with him. He did paths for me. He, he, that's, that's, that's just their culture also. Right. So, So it was, um, it was crazy. It was crazy knowing somebody so famous. I was, I was, I went to this K1 fights with him one time, and then we took the train back to uh, Tokyo, and I couldn't even take the train with him. People wouldn't stop staring at him, showing like, oh, kid, kid, Osan, kid, kid. Like they were, they were, they, were, they really love him in there. He's a really superstar. So, so it was very. It was for me. Mm -hmm. I never know somebody like that. Like you know, like. They can't even walk in the streets because he will get recognized. It was, it was, it was really crazy for me watching that. That's nuts. That's nuts. So when you're in Japan, I mean, we all dream to go to Japan, the land of the rising sun for martial arts, for sushi, for anime, <laughs> for ramen. Ramen. So when you when you're in Japan, did, did you have a chance? Please tell me you had a chance to see Gundam Square. You know, they have that big Gundam giant robot. Did you manage to see that? Or did you visit like a Pokemon store? What was the one store that really stood out to you? When I, you were there? Is, is, that, is, that, is that on the Odaiba, Odaiba Mall? Because I saw a huge robot on a yes, mall. I went yes. to a mall. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I, I have a picture with that. I got a picture in that. Oh my God, that's amazing. I'll send it to you later. I'll Please send do. I'll send it to you later if I can find it. Oh, if But you yeah, I went there. It, it, it was, you know, all that kind of stuff. They, they have stores all full of video games, like floors, people playing video games. It's 
I don't know how many people is in there, a thousand just playing video games. One floor is just of uh, machine slots. Other one is, I don't know, Pokemon. Other one is cards. Other one is uh, like regular, like cards. Like, it's just crazy. It's really, it's really, it's really another world. Japan is, it's, it's a 20, 40 million, I don't know how many, 20 million people city. And I was speaking that with a friend the, the other day. And it's kids walking by themselves. Four, the five-year-old kid takes his three-year-old brother to the subway, leaves him in the, in the school and everything. And that's in a 20 million city and nothing happens to them. It's just, it's just a very, very nice place to be. You feel like, wow, this is respect all around. They are, mm. they, they respect each other. Like you won't see somebody screaming in public or doing like something that it will uncomfortable other. It's just, it's just amazing. It's a great culture to, to learn because it makes you also a, a, a good like citizens to the other people. Like it makes you see the example with them. It's, it's very, very amazing. Well, the things that I saw, right? So in your travel so far, I mean, you've been to Texas, you've been to Atlantic City and Japan. And I would, would it be safe to say, like, I'm sure you loved all those cities, but was Japan the most significant to you of what you saw, how society behaves? Well, for me, the most, the most shocking one, and, and it, it, was, it was for good and for bad, it was Yangon. Yangon is Burma. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, I, I went there because my coach was fighting one championship and they did an event there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was Burma used, it used to be a country. It was closed for like, I don't know, like 70 years. Yeah. It was close. And now they're still letting people back. And it was very. I come Costa Rica is a third world country. Don't get me wrong. But that was way that was way worse. What I've seen here, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was very, very crazy. But it was also very very nice because everything wasn't so cosmopolitan you know it wasn't that big like cities and uh it was it was nice it was interesting it was the lead way that's the lead way uh land so watching mm -hmm. lead way like how they they headbutt they they doesn't use the the the, the it's the art of the nine limbs right because they mm -hmm. use the headbutts it's the same as muay thai they they use tape instead of, of gloves and yeah it was it was amazing but in in shocking also from the other side the first world like watching first world it was tokyo was really impressive because seeing new york and tokyo it's it's, it's the, the same but i'll say tokyo is in order and new york is chaos that's what i'll say mm -hmm. it's, it's it's very different but everything everything has a charm that's what i'm saying everything gives me i'm very very humble to always know new places because it, it gives you a lot of different perspectives right amazing amazing that's awesome that's a, a humble it, travel is the best education you don't watch it yeah. on tv you don't read it in a book i know it sounds cliche but go to the country if you want to really understand the culture exactly exactly so once so now this is like the one the next question so you've had a success so you know before before, before COVID, and I say that in anger tone because COVID <laughs> angered everybody. So, you know, it was, a, it was a crazy year. You know, I'm sure you wanted to fight. Then I also saw, too, there were some canceled bouts. You know, things didn't go your way. But it seems like we're on the right path now where things are slowly starting to come back to whatever normal, normal is. Right? Yeah. What's the plan for 2022? Well, yeah, it's been, it's been tough, right? A couple of fights, scrap off. And then uh, and then two days before I, I go back to the States last year to, to, to train, I broke my foot. So, mm. so, it, so it's been, it's been, it's been, it's not been tough because I've always been training for me. Competing isn't the uh, ultimate goal because the ultimate goal is it's, it's getting to the big leagues, right? So competing right now in the local promotion, it doesn't, it's not something that has me, like, okay, let's go, let's go. By training, it's always what got me going. So I always been training for all these three years. Although I haven't competed, I got really, really good at all the stuff that I need to work on. And also this injury, um, well, gave me also more, as I told you, I always had that fire, but it got bigger. So my plans for this year is just, um, yeah, try to get into the big leagues. I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hopefully fight into the U in in the UFC by the end of the year, if not before. Hopefully, I get a couple of fights in there, and uh, yeah, that's my goal. The goal from me and my team. That's what we're working towards, and uh, 
hopefully that's going to happen soon. And uh, yeah, is that or if I need to find a local promotion, I'll do that. I, I just need to get back on track after this injury. It was a, it was a gross, gruesome injury. It was a, a freak injury because my foot was looking the other way. I got two big scars yeah. on my leg. I'm, uh, I'm a couple months away from uh, being uh, medically cleared to compete. I'm medically cleared to, to train a little bit. Grappling is still, still a little bit. I need to be a little bit careful, but in a, in a month or so, the fracture will be fully healed and uh, I'll be 100% ready to go. So, so yeah, the, the plan for this year is competing and doing anything at any means to get into the UFC. If it's fighting, whatever, whoever, I just, I just need that for myself. It makes total sense. That's amazing. It's an amazing outlook that you're willing to take even more local fights just to keep active. Uh, but how's the recovery? I need to. I'm probably going to need to, right? I haven't fought, as, as, you saw, as you said, I haven't fought since 2019. And uh, I have been training. My coaches know how good I've been. And if, if, it's, we'll, if it depends on them, they will pull me, I know, with, with, with anybody. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I still got to prove. I guess I got to prove a little bit, maybe get a fight maybe get two. I don't care, as I told you, but at any means, that's the plan. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm not eager, but I'm excited because I still need a month or so to, to, to still be careful and be out of a danger zone with my leg, but, uh, but I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm happy. I'm, start, I'm starting to kick now. Nice. It's, it's feeling pretty good. It's feeling pretty good. And how's the, so it's feeling good, but how's the recovery process been? Like, what, a, like, how's it been for you? Like, I know it sounds like a dumb question to ask, but it's just like, it just like, was it like, was it like, it was a freak injury. So was it, has the recovery process been very difficult in terms of the physio and what you have to do? For me, it was, it was, it was, I thought I just, I was, I was, it's kind of, it's kind of weird with me, but I had a mentality that I was, I was kind of not when it happened, I was kind of looking forward to, to see what process it was. I was kind of excited, a little mm -hmm. bit of excitement to see, okay, I'm, I'm going to be able to overcome this and I'm going to be able to, how it's going to be to go back to walk. I was going to be to go back to getting my leg. What's going to happen when my legs is not going to respond, my brain, my brain senses or my signals. Right. And, um, I mean, it's, it's not being hard. I have a lot of support here in Costa Rica. I'm glad it happened in Costa Rica because uh, I got a, I got surgery within a couple of hours that the, the accident happened. And mm -hmm. I got therapies here that have been helping me for six years, seven years, eight years. I don't know how long, but it's really good therapies. The best athletes in Costa Rica go there. And uh, they have me in, in record time. Like I've, I've been boxing since uh, December and I got injured in August. Connor got injured in July and he's not, and he got boxing last week, something like that. So I'm a very, I've been done a very professional um treatment uh, i was telling my friends like laughing i'm doing the cristiano ronaldo uh recovery uh calendar or like routine mm -hmm. uh i did hyperbolic cham chamber i did anything that it was on my power and, and and also my family power because they've been very 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 supportive with me uh yeah my family my team my girlfriend everybody just being it's just been amazing so it's, it wasn't hard but I had a couple of weeks that I, that I was like, oh, come on, come on, like, let's work. I, it, I was limping. I got this gangster, this gangster, like, walk, you know, for a couple of weeks that he wasn't suing on me. So I'm glad I, start, I stopped limping. I got three surgeries. Now I got my last mm -hmm. surgery. Uh, I got my last surgery seven weeks ago from today, seven weeks ago from today. So, yeah, my, my leg is feeling very, very strong. I'm, I'm jumping now. I'm kicking. I'm starting to grapple a little bit with, with, with my friends a little bit. I've been boxing for a long time. So I got really good at boxing now. So I've been, that's when I've been focusing and lifting weights a lot, getting stronger. And uh, it's been a very, I'm happy. It's almost a memory. It's almost gone. And uh, I'm very also happy that it, it happened in a way. Of course, I'm mm -hmm. not happy I broke my leg because, uh, but I'm happy because of the learning that I got, the, the experience, the, the patience, the, the feeling that frustration, feeling that it, I, I just feel you can grow from that. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that you can look at it. And I, and I always look at it like that. Since I was injured, I just told the doctor when I'm back, what's next, mm -hmm. what we got to do. He told me that. So, so yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy as I told you that, uh, that uh, my discipline is paying off. I'm back on my feet now and I'm, I'm, I'm almost back to training. I'll be back in, 
into the States in a couple of weeks to go back and, and recover my training. I know my friends are going to be happy to see me. They've been supporting me. Also, my team from the States is being text me every day. How are you feeling? How are you doing? So, as I told you, man, when you got a lot of support, it makes it it makes it makes so easy. I have Nima. I have my team in the state. I have my team in Costa Rica. I got my family. When you're loved, it's, it, everything is easy. Everything is easy for me. When I get all this support, I just I just feel like, I know people say you got to do it for yourself, but uh, when I see so many people helping me, it just, it just bring a different, different kind of fire and makes it, it makes it personal every time that I'm in the map. It just makes it, makes it personal because it's, it's, it's my, uh, my family and my team's name that I, that I got to go and, and look up for, for them, you know, to represent them. As mm-hmm. it says. That's amazing. Well, I'm really happy to hear that. The recovery has uh, helped give you a better mindset. And especially it's super important too, as you're saying, to have those relationships in your corner, because if you don't have them, then you're not, you're never going to getting out of bed is just going to be much more challenging the the day after than it was before. And also, you know, for me is, is, as I told you, I'm glad it happened in Costa Rica because of the therapists I know for so many years, they know me by the doctor is one of my, he's an orthopedic surgeon, specialist in medicine He's one of my best friends. I teach him classes of, he used to be, he is a Kyokushin black belt actually. Whoa. And I used to teach him, I teach him now boxing and MMA. So having his friend, like being here, having this kind of support, knowing the people, he also gives you confidence also, because if they are telling you to move, to kick, to do this, I am confident because that's, I think that's the major thing with, with injuries is confidence, getting your confidence back. Like all these athletes, maybe they come back and they don't feel the same, but if you're, if your doctor, your therapist and your, your teammates, your coaches and telling you that you are the same, you got to believe in that. And that's, as I told you, having people that I trust during this process is making me, it's making it so easy. It's making, mm-hmm. I even feel like you, people will ask me, I know it will sound like bad if I tell that, but how is the recovery? I say easy. This, mm-hmm. this was easy for me. As I told you, I had a lot, a lot of help. It wasn't easy some days. I was telling you, I was frustrated. It hurt. My, my leg will move. My mobility range will, wouldn't advance, but easy. easy. I, I know I'm going to have more tough experiences in the, in the, in the future, and uh, I'm looking forward for them. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. So... I'm happy to hear, and uh, I guess we'll conclude it there, man. I just really want to thank you for coming on and taking time to do this. Uh, it was a huge honor. I'm going to be supporting and following your journey because the sky's the limit for you with the, the people you have behind you since you have an A1 team. So, Andre, where can people connect with you if they want to follow you and whatnot? Well, they can they can follow me on Instagram. It's Andre Barquero underscore. That's mm-hmm. my, my – and it's the same on Twitter. And mm-hmm. – um, and on, on Facebook is Andre Barquero dot Andre dot Barquero MMA. Mm-hmm. That's my uh, my Facebook page. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'll hopefully I, I'll get into the YouTube world like you in, soon. I, I want to start doing like some blogs mm-hmm. from the training I get in Philly or something like that. Maybe maybe that helps with the sponsors or something, right? <laughs> the marketing Never yourself. Know. <laughs> Never know. You so, just gotta anything to put yourself on anything to put yourself out there. You're just helping yourself. Yeah. So, so yeah, man, I'm, 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 I'm really thankful for you and Nima to, to give me this outlet to tell a little bit about my story. Um, and yeah, man, I'm, 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 I'm really, really happy to be on, on your, on your podcast. Uh, I love the questions. You did your homework a hundred percent. You did it. You knew, you knew some, most of the stuff from my career, if not everything. Uh, and yeah, man, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I love talking with you. It was a great chat and, uh, Hopefully we can do it in the future again when, when I fight or something so we can we can have something to talk about. The door is open anytime, any day. So that's what I love hearing. That's the real value. When the cust when the person says, I'm willing to come on again, that's more that means the most to me. It's not it because sometimes you get someone on the first time and you think, oh wow, well, will I ever speak to them again? But then you get people like <laughs> yourself, get people like Nima, you get people like Bert, Joey, um, others in the Kyokushin world and it's uh, and it's like wow it's like they're willing to come on again so it's a big we're, honor we're healed together to help each other you know it's a community we gotta help each other it's so totally true you know we're only you only at the end of the day if you want to go f- my, my 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 friend Mohammed's gonna be like you stole that from me that my <laughs> post I had uh, Mohammed 
I just want to let you know, I'm sorry if I'm taking this quote, but this is like, but this is the quote that got me to become. You're giving him the copyright at least. You're giving yeah. him the, 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 the. Yeah. He's going to sue me. He's, he's going to, I'm going to get a message from him. He's going to say, I'm coming for you. I'm going to smash you. And like, cause my friend Mo and me are like, I'm sure you've seen my Instagram story. Like he's my Kyokushin buddy, but he's like the yeah. the Hamza Chimayev to my Darren Till. So that's how yeah. my friendship is. So the quote is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's where, how it should be when you're helping each other, when we're helping each other out with this stuff. A hundred percent. That's a hundred percent. I'm going to, I'm going to take that code also. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, I'll have a word with him if he comes to you, but yeah, just remember if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Gotcha. That's All amazing. Right. That's a good one. Tell your friend Mo, sorry, but I will use it. I'll use it soon. <laughs> Perfect. Will do. All right, guys, make sure to hit the like, share, subscribe button. The Drew Spirits is on every platform, whether it's video or audio. The, we are, the community is only growing. So the more we get it out there, the more you're helping me get better content to grow the community because we grow together. Thank you, Andre. Like now, do it. Do like it. That. Right now. <laughs> Now I'll uh, beat you. No, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> All right, Audrey, have a, the, the, we'll keep, I'll make sure to get this episode up ASAP and as soon as we can and uh, hopefully by April. And yeah, thanks once again. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it a lot.